So, welcome back. Uh, we continue uh, with the proof that the generator G is Q at Z. Okay. So, it is again easy to check that G is densely defined. So, here is the dense subset of uh, that is uh, a subset of D G and closed operator you directly verify. Okay. Write down the condition on that what is meant by an operator closed. Okay. So, I just concentrate on these two things. So, G is skew symmetric and on this. Okay. So, just <coughs> so the first so let me write G is skew symmetric. So, what we have to show? We have to show is g x or uh, not g x. So, let me because we are dealing with functions. G f g this inner product in h is equal to minus f g g for all f g in d g. Okay. So, for that you just take let f equal to f 1 f 2 and g equal to so, to begin with I take this g 1 g 2 to be smooth functions. I want to integrate by parts. So, that is where I need, <coughs> but they are dense. Okay. So, that is what we are going to use. So, now let us let me write that what is the <coughs> this g f g g f g in h. So, let me write that uh, <coughs> this is. So, this the components of g f are f 2 Laplacian f 1 and the components of g are g 1 g 2 and that inner product is in h and by definition that is integral grad f 2 dot grad g 1. So, again you may put the uh, complex conjugate there, but I am not doing that uh, plus this is Laplace in f 1 g 2. Okay. And I am assuming that G2 is in uh, C infinity, so I can integrate by parts, and this will give me. Uh, okay, let me just write grad F2, grad G1 uh, minus so this grad F1, grad G2. I am integrating my parts and there are no boundary conditions because G 2 has compact support. Okay. So, this holds for all G 1, G 2 which are in <coughs> C infinity. Okay. So, by density by density this result holds this equality holds holds for all g in d g. Okay. So, let me call this as just 1. Okay. And similarly, now you consider this f d g consider f g g 
again to begin with you assume f 1 f 2 are <coughs> in uh, C C infinity. So, now f 1 f 2 and you have g 2 Laplace and g 1. Okay. So, this is integral in f 1 grad g 2 plus f 2 Laplace g 1. Okay. And now, here I want to integrate the parts first. Okay. So, this will give you this is minus grad f 2 and grad g 1. And again you extend by density to all f in d g. So, we get here this grad g 2 minus grad. So, this is 2. Okay. Now, just you <coughs> Uh, compare 1 and 2, you immediately see that. So, g is skew symmetric. Okay. So, <coughs> this for example, here this integral grad of 1 grad g 2 is negative sign and here it is a positive sign that is fine. Okay. And the next one, okay, just to show uh, <coughs> to show plus or minus one belongs to the resolvent set of. Uh, g okay so essentially we have to solve okay let me just uh, so given given g in h we have to discuss the solvability discuss the solvability of this plus or minus i minus g f equal to g for f in. So, we have to get in d g. Okay. Uh, now, you write again f equal to f 1 f 2. Okay, and again you the definition of uh, uh, g. So, what you get is, so let me just write that. For example, taking first plus sign, okay. so you get f 1 minus f 2 equal to g 1 and f 2 minus Laplace and f 1 equal to g 2. And if you add these two, what you get is f 1 minus Laplace and f 1 is equal to g 1 plus g 2. And if you take minus sign, so similarly you get f 1 minus Laplace and f 1 is equal to g 1 minus g 2. Okay. And you have already studied in the elliptic part of this course. Uh, so, at least <coughs> so if g 1 g 2 belong to uh, again c infinity c, we can uh, obtain the solutions f 1 and then f 2. So, f 1 minus f 2 is g 1. So, f 2 is obtained from and then uh, f 2 also 
using Fourier transform. Okay, so this you have seen it many times. Okay. So for if the right hand side is in <coughs> smooth class, we obtain a solution f belonging to the domain of G. Okay. So what does that say? So this implies the image of plus or minus i minus g contains uh, contains this which is dense in h. So, that means the image is dense. Okay. So, by my earlier remark, so that shows, so therefore, image of uh, plus or minus i minus g is dense in H. Okay. And that proves g is squared. Okay. So, write down uh, the steps in detail, okay. may be for the first time you are seeing all these uh, unbounded operators and other things. Okay. Write down all the steps carefully uh, <coughs> to understand in a better way. Okay. Okay. So, that uh, so, by Stone's theorem, theorem G generates a unitary group. So, let me call it u t in scattering theory of the wave equation they denote it by u 0 t it is a free space there is no obstacle when uh, wave equation is considered in with obstacle then they denote it by u t but it is since we are not doing that. So, I call it u t. Okay. So, again let me recall okay, so what does this mean? this means u inverse t is nothing but the adjoint of t and in this case it is also u of minus t okay. and norm of u t equal to 1 for all t and norm of this is like partial relation. So, this uh, for all f in H that Hilbert space and all t and this is what gives us uh, we as we see leads to uh, because this norm in the Hilbert space is precisely the energy norm. So, that gives us gives conservation of energy. So, if we choose the domain of G differently, we may still get a group generated by it, but then we may not get this conservation of energy which is a physical requirement. Okay. So, uh, any other domain uh, if you consider it can only be partially correct, okay. but then how this is connected to uh, wave equation okay. connection with finally, we have to show that right. So, here we do not see we only see that operator g and now there is a 
unitary group ok, but how it is connected to wave equation connection to of course, everything has originated from there. So, we should uh, <coughs> able to connect to wave equation. Okay. So, again by <coughs> general theory of semi groups we developed uh, this happens. Okay. So, let f belongs to uh, f belongs to d g. Okay. Then this mapping with this we have already studied this going to u t f is differentiable see how the general theory is helping us and this relation we have d by d t of u t f. See as of now we know only the existence of this unitary group, but we do not know what is this u t f in terms of f. Okay, so, that is not clear, right. <coughs> but when we restrict f to certain subspace, namely this subspace of the generator, then we have this. Of course, this is we do not need that, this is also true. Okay. So, for the time being just temporarily write that the this uh, u t f. So, u t f 1 f 2 just write that u t v t. Okay. That is the <coughs> this is mapping from h to h itself. Okay. So, this so just g u t v t. Okay. So, this is if you use the definition of <coughs> this g you get uh, this p t Laplace here, right. <coughs> but this is what? This we have not done that. So, this is uh, what shall I write? Okay, this is just du by dt, dv by dt. Okay. So, now you just <coughs> equate the uh, respective components. So, you immediately see that so therefore, so we have V is equal to U T okay, and <coughs> uh, V T is equal to Laplace here and that I have of course implies u t t Laplace. So, the first component uh, of this operator so the first component namely u t become the solution of the wave equation. So, therefore, the first component uh, of u t f represents the solution of the wave equation.
Okay, so, we, in fact, we get little more. So, let me just uh, <coughs> say that thing. So, in fact, we obtain more. We get more info. Okay. So, what is that more info? Uh, <coughs> this Laplacian u, if you again look at the just keep on looking that. So, when f is in d g, so this Laplacian u, the second component is in L 2. Okay. So, we have the Laplacian u is in L 2, L 2 of R n okay, and that implies del square u del x i del x j also in L 2 for So, recall that I already commented uh, in the one of the previous classes. So, it is very important that here we are working in L 2 okay, and in R n. So, we are can use the Fourier transform and get it and I do not know whether this is true if p is uh, in L p, p not equal to 2. Okay. That is one thing. Uh, <coughs> And, and d by d t of u t f, this is again in the Hilbert space h and that implies del square u by del t del x i are also in L 2 for 1 less than i. So, finally, so u t t uh, equal to Laplacian u because that is what we obtained and that implies u t t is also in L 2. So, these are some kind of regularity <coughs> uh, we obtain on the solution. So, all these derivatives are uh, in L 2 and this is what we require in the uh, energy estimate. So, let me just recall that we did okay. So, recall this is energy estimate which was proved under the <coughs> smoothness assumption. Uh, this energy of u in B 0 r, r is any positive number at any time t is less than or equal to E of u B 0 r plus t at 0 and similarly here. So, the main ingredient here was uh, using the Green's theorem on that uh, uh, cone. Okay, so, this r minus t. So, r is bigger than t okay, whatever time we choose there and again at 0. Okay, so, this <coughs> energy estimates, this estimate now holds for. So, this was proved under the assumption that u is smooth by taking the initial conditions smooth, but now with all this uh, 
conclusions on the solution u and <coughs> all its uh, second derivatives and of course, first derivatives are already there. Okay, so, okay, that is part of the definition of the space h. Okay. So, this estimate now holds for the solution. obtained from semi group obtained from ut any of conservation of energy is already there but even this estimate uh, this is local right this is you are only getting the energy at <coughs> a local ball so even this estimate holds for that solution Okay. So, I just want to <coughs> this I continue in the next class. So, what I do is so next time. So, uh, now consider this is another choice okay. this h has h 1 cross L 2. Okay. So, <coughs> so, this is of course, typical of uh, wave equation. So, the first component uh, namely <coughs> that f 1 f 2 is always uh, have one extra regularity than the f 2. So, if f 2 is in L 2 f 1 is in H 1. Okay. So, this is one possibility. Okay, so, this is a possibility okay. and now same g, g is same. Okay, so, 0 identity Laplacian 0 and now d g is just h 2 cross h 1. Okay. So, here also it is possible to <coughs> so it is possible uh, to show that G generates a group. And in fact, it is not unitary. If it is unitary, then we get uh, conservation of energy, but now the space this H1, okay, so there is already the L2 norm of that function comes into play. Okay. So, we do not get so, but the conservation of energy. energy is not satisfied. So, the moral of the story is that there could be many choices for the a certain operator with certain domain. So, it can generate uh, a semi group or even a group, but it may fail to satisfy certain uh, physical requirements. Okay. So, one should keep these things in mind uh, while applying this <coughs> abstract theory of semi groups. Okay. So, next time I will take up this again on the wave equation, but now with uh, this setup. Okay. It is similar. Uh, but the computations are bit lengthy because now we have do not have that. Uh, see, last time we just in this case we just showed that say g is a squared joint, but now we have to obtain the spectral <coughs> estimate, resolvent estimates. Okay, so resolvent estimates are uh, bit difficult. 
okay, but it is worth doing. So, let me just show you uh, <coughs> are difficult because now we do not have that square jointness. Okay. So, we have to obtain the resolvent estimates and again there we use uh, the elliptic theory and Fourier transform and other things. Thank you.